It seems like most of life is just trying to figure out how to make things go your way. But our human plight is that generally things don't. And when favor is smiling upon us, we're always waiting for the other shoe to drop. It doesn't help when we're when we're we seem to have inherent weaknesses, maybe a weakness of the will, maybe it's a lack of discipline. Maybe it's an actual disability, a handicap, a learning disability, a physical infirmity that holds us back. And we're just trying to figure out how to play the cards that we've been dealt. Well, I read about a man recently that um, that really uh, piqued my interest quite a bit, and he helps to illustrate where I want to go with this this um, the story. I, I was reading a book. I was reading a book called. Well, actually, I'm still reading the book called The Tale of the Dueling Neurosurgeons by Sam Keen. This is a really good book, and so I want to give him due credit. But he talked about a man named James Holman in this book. And James Holman was a, was a guy who joined the British Navy at the age of 12 in 1798. But he only served up until the, about the age of 25, right before the War of 1812. I think it was about that time. And then he had to be reassigned because he had contracted some kind of an illness off the coast of North America. It was called flying gout. Now, this is a catch-all syndrome that was given anything they couldn't figure out. Now, he had swollen and aching joints and headaches and things like this, but they couldn't figure out how to cure it. They couldn't figure out how to cure it. But it was so bad that they had to actually take him out of active service, and they reappointed him to the... Uh, the uh, uh, as a naval knight of Windsor, that's what he was called. This is a, a, a basically a very boring job where he had to go to chapel twice a day, and offer extra prayers for kings and lords, and he sat around in his apartment all day doing nothing. He couldn't even read. He was bored to death, and he developed wanderlust. He 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 wanted to he wanted to get out and experience the world for himself. So he set out on foot. He wore a straw hat his naval jacket and he carried a, a cane with a metal tip and he just he walked around the he, I mean he went everywhere he went to India China Burma Australia Africa he went everywhere in fact he was the most traveled man in history uh, logging 250,000 miles that's about 10 times around the equator or one trip to the moon and so this man had had seen the world. Well, I say seen the world. He, this man had experienced the world in a way that no other had, and he wrote about it in books. He uh, he, he wrote about his adventures. He even offered recipes that he picked up along the way. And so, um, uh, you know, some of the things that he experienced was he he actually climbed Mount Vesuvius in mid eruption and about burned the soles off of his feet, off off off, off of his shoes, I should say, on his feet. <laughs> But he about burned the soles off of his shoes and when he climbed Mount Vesuvius. And they, it was said that he chased uh, slave traders. He negotiated with headhunters. He mapped the Australian outback. Um, he did all sorts of things. But he wrote about all these adventures. And apparently he was quite a ladies' man. And, um, you, and so you might say, well, okay, so he had aching joints. And he had headaches. Who couldn't do that with that? I mean, to some degree, it might be uncomfortable. But understand something. The most amazing thing about James Holman was that he was completely blind. Completely blind. Even though he traveled the world, and he did this by himself. He traveled the world by himself. And he wrote about it in great detail. In fact, the, the what it was said in here that the British literati did not believe that he was blind because it said that he wrote in such graphic detail. There's no way that a blind man could have experienced that. No, he was, he, he'd, he'd even traveled through Siberia and was deported as a, as a spy because they didn't believe anybody would travel through Siberia just for fun. But the people, the, the, uh, book aficionados in London just didn't believe him, but he was blind. He was absolutely blind. See, he had contracted uveitis. And uveitis is a painful eye condition, which eventually renders you blind. And in very rare cases, you do get your eyesight back. He didn't. Like I said, it's very rare cases. So he remained blind the rest of his life. And he's a very accomplished person. And he even told the people who do not believe him that he really believed that being blind actually 
made him a superior world traveler because he was able to experience the world through all of the other senses in a very maximal way. Ways that you and I can't. In fact, it's said that people who had UVI's that did regain their sight were often disappointed at having done so. They were disappointed by the way people looked, by the by the sudden dulling of the senses once they received their sight back. And so it's funny how what seemed to be a handicap was viewed as almost a gift by James Holman. You have to understand that back during that time, blind people were treated much different. I don't know about all parts of the world, but at least in reference to where he lived, the way blind people were treated was that uh, you basically, once you contracted UVIs or you were blind at all for any reason, you might as well just get your hat or a bowl and sit outside and beg for alms. Or you can join a carnival and you'd be made a spectacle of. They would take blind people in these carnivals and they would set them up on stage in ridiculous scenarios and watch them stumble and feel their way around and everybody would laugh at them. And this is how blind people were treated. But James Holman was not a victim. James Holman was not a victim just because he had an apparent weakness. It's funny. He made the most of his weakness. He actually turned his weakness into a strength. He turned it to his advantage. So that's my point. That's my takeaway today. Is if you feel that you're at a disadvantage because of some inherent weakness, some impediment, some handicap or disability... Can you find a way, can you find a way to make it work for you? Can you turn it to your advantage? Can you take the cards that you've been dealt and play a superior game, in fact, in a way that nobody else would have thought you could have? You see, it's almost as if, it's almost as if these weaknesses, it's almost as if this handicap was a gateway to superior world experience for James Holman. I mean, I don't, I don't know if I can really say much more than that. I'm not stricken with anything. I'm not sick, stricken with any grievous illness or, or handicap myself. So I can only speak to a certain degree on this. I can only speak by observing this story through the pages of this book and just be a, being astonished by what this man did and hoping that, you know, if, if I was ever found in that situation that I would not see myself as a victim and that I could turn it to my advantage. But I say all that, but does not mean I don't have a weakness of the will in some regards. I do. Everybody does. Everybody experiences, experiences weaknesses. That's why, that's why we cave in. That's why we have horrible relationships and argue with our spouses and our friends because we, we're weak. We're weak-minded. We're weak-willed. And uh, that in itself is a serious handicap. In fact, that's more serious than a physical one. Physical handicaps people try to overcome. They 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 survive. In fact, that's why that's why James Holman had a cane with a metal tip on it. He would the, and I said before that he traveled the world by himself. He did it by tapping the metal tip of his cane every few steps, and and he would he would function by echolocation. That's where vibration goes out and he it, it's received back to him in pictures. The world around him, he he could see he could know the difference between a statue and a monolith. He could he could distinguish between a person and a sign or a building. He could distinguish all of that. And it's it's said that one in ten blind people can master this ability. Now I'm not going to surmise why some do, do and some don't, but that was James Holman for you. James Holm, what an amazing story. What an amazing character that is. So, I hope this meant something to you. I hope it gave you something to think about today. And um, and I hope that maybe you can, instead of uh, trying to eliminate and run away from those things that are an impediment to you, or maybe are seen as a handicap or a weakness to you, embrace them. Embrace them and find out how I how I can make this work, since I have to deal with it anyway, since this is what I've been given, these are cards I've been dealt, how do I make it work for me? All right, guys, if you like the content, please hit the like button and, and subscribe. And if you care to, share it with somebody. All right, I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.